Engineering projects don't come much more challenging than this. A team of UK engineers are aiming to smash the land speed record by building a supersonic car that will travel at 1,000 miles per hour. The Bloodhound supersonic car is being built by the same team that set the current land speed record of 763 miles per hour almost 20 years ago now. Ex-RAF pilot Andy Green will be behind the driving wheel again as he attempts to secure a new record in South Africa next year. The Bloodhound supersonic car is the most extraordinary straight line racing car in history. It's a car that will do a thousand miles an hour. It is a blend of part jet, supersonic jet fighter. It is part Formula One uh, racing car technology and it is part next generation space rocket. The car is being built here in a hangar on the outskirts of Bristol. It will contain over 3,500 components sourced from the best engineering companies around the world. This includes a one-ton Rolls-Royce jet engine from a Eurofighter Typhoon and a cluster of Norwegian Namo hybrid rockets developed to power the next generation of space launchers. Does the project show how good British engineering is? Absolutely. So some of our key technical partners, likes of Rolls-Royce, some of the most difficult parts of the car to solve have been solved here in the UK. About 90% of our supply chain is UK based, but it's a reality of the technology and how it's spread over the globe that about 10% of our partners are international. So we have partners in Europe, in the Middle East, in Asia, in Japan, in North America, and we've needed all of these technologies together to solve this problem. The £41 million project, funded by about 300 companies, is not just about setting new records, but it also hopes to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers by showing them exactly how exciting the field can be. Fairfield High School in Bristol is one of 5,700 UK schools that are involved in the Bloodhound project. I think it's really interesting because um, it is quite inspirational. A lot of us at school were talking about it sort of thing. Um, I, I like the idea of breaking the land record and bringing schools into it as well because obviously they need more engineers. So I think it's a good idea. Today we were just building some connect cars basically to just test our rocket pressure kind of ideas and just making a support that works, just basic chassis and things like that. But yeah, just making a car basically. I would very much consider becoming an engineer, even if it, you know, everyone thinks, oh, engineering is so practical, so hands-on. It, it can be hands-on if you want to go in that direction with it, but you can also go in this other crazy direction of making wacky, innovative ideas that's just ridiculous, and you can go like that instead. Whether the project will succeed in its aim to address the crippling skill shortage impacting Britain's engineering sector will remain to be seen. But for now, the focus will be on finishing the car ready for low-speed testing in Newquay this summer. If all goes to plan, Team Bloodhelm will look to reach 800 miles per hour in South Africa this October before attempting the 1,000 miles per hour speed record next year. The most difficult question in the world to answer is what does it feel like? I'm a jet fighter pilot, I'm used to jet powered vehicles, supersonic uh, travel, etc. So it's a bit like my day job. But again, if you don't fly supersonic jet fighters, that's not going to help you. Um, it is the most extraordinary experience. It's very intense, it's physically uncomfortable. It's a small cockpit, it's very hot, incredibly noisy. Acceleration of 2G, deceleration of 3G, that's 60 miles an hour per second the speed is coming off. All of that as background noise, which I have to shut out while I'm fighting to control an eight-ton vehicle developing the equivalent of 135,000 thrust horsepower, which will be on the limits of stability at three or 400 miles an hour. So I'll be fighting the steering through the solid metal wheels on the loose, slippery, dried lake bed surface in South Africa, while the rocket's firing and accelerating us at that incredible speed. All of that as a background, it's going to be enormously challenging, but also the most enormous privilege and opportunity to be able to develop that car as part of the, the most extraordinary land speed record team of all time. It's going to be a tremendous experience. We can't wait to get started. One thing for sure, the Bloodhound project has already got more people, and in particular school children, talking about British engineering and just how exciting it can be. Tanya Foley, Financial Times, Bristol.